Good morning. Guys, learning to play a musical instrument, particularly at the elementary school level, has a tremendous impact on the student. Studies show us that students who learn to play a musical instrument score higher on math tests. They score higher on language tests. They have better spatial reasoning. They have a lower instance of drug and alcohol involvement, higher self-esteem, and a higher high school graduation rate. Now, when you tie that into studies that show that high school graduates earn more money over their lifetime, they have more stable families, and they give more back to the community, you've got to ask, why does learning to play a musical instrument make such a difference? Now, John Donnie, who is a, a, a professor at Perlman School of Medicine, says that learning to play a musical instrument engages every part of the central nervous system, tapping even the right and left sides of the brain. It's incredible. We have uh, brainfacts.org that tells us that learning to play a musical instrument is the brain equivalent of a full body workout. And even Albert Einstein weighed in on it. He said, if I were not a physicist, I would have been a musician. I see my life in terms of music. So that asks the question, why? And in order to answer that, let's walk through what it takes to learn to play a musical instrument. This is a musical staff. Five lines, four spaces. Each line and space corresponds to a different note, a different pitch. The student has to understand this. This is a page from the Instruments of Change curriculum. We're introducing students to their first note. And you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, we see the staff, we see the note and where it rests. It shows the fingering for both instruments that we teach. Now we're down to the exercises, and here's where it begins. So the student looks at the music, right? We've engaged the visual cortex. They have to determine where on the staff that note rests. So we're into spatial reasoning. Then they have to determine, hmm, what note is that? What fingers do I have to push down to play? And how long do I have to play this note? This is a whole note, it's four beats. That could be a long time. At the same time, the brain begins to engage all the muscle systems in the body that need to interact. So it tells the diaphragm, you gotta get a lot of air, this is a whole note, let's fill up those lungs. It tells the forearm, you've got to push down these fingers to be able to play that note. It tells the upper arm, shoulder, chest, and back, you've got to raise that instrument to the right position and the right pressure against the mouth to be able to play that note. Now we've got air in our lungs, we've got the instrument in the right place, everything's kind of moving, and now we've got to get air out of our lungs. And this is where it really gets to a fine, fine measure. Because we can't just blow the air out of our lungs, right? It has to come out in a measured amount over the right amount of time at the right air pressure or I don't get a note. And at the same time, I have to engage the muscles in the throat, the jaw, the cheeks, the lips, the tongue, to form what's called the embouchure. It's the aperture that the air passes through those lips. And the muscle control is a lot more difficult than you might think, because if I change the tension on my lips just a little, I jump up five notes. I'm not playing the note I want. Or if I loosen up, I drop down five notes. So what's happened here is we've engaged the visual cortex, spatial reasoning, cognitive recognition, muscle control, all kinds of parts of our brain to get to the point where we've played that note. And then the auditory cortex kicks in. Because the auditory cortex is the area of the brain where we process language and we process uh, patterns and rhythms and, and music. And the auditory cortex is gonna tell us, did I play the right note? And if I didn't, the brain almost instantaneously makes changes to correct that. That's a ton of brain power to play one note. That explains to all of you parents why it sounded like it did when your student was learning to play, right? Imagine the brain power it takes to play that, right? How many notes are you processing? We're all going through all this activity. So that begs the question, because every question seems to lead to another question, what does all this brain activity have to do with anything? And in order to understand that, we talk about the concept of neuroplasticity. It's the ability of the brain to modify its connections, to change its wiring, right? In the same way when we exercise, we see a visual change in the size and shape of our muscles. When you exercise all the parts of the brain through imaging, you can see changes, physical changes, specifically in the brains of people who have had musical training. There are two areas specific that are, are just huge. One is the hippocampus. The hippocampus is that part of the brain that deals with memory and learning and music. 
The other is the corpus callosum. Those are the nerves and, and connections between the hemispheres of the brain. And the corpus callosum allows the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere to communicate. So your creative side and your logical side have better communication, better transfer of data. So we know the, the academic benefits, right? And we've seen what it does to brain power. But let's talk about one other aspect, the social aspect. I talked in the beginning about self-esteem, right? Human beings are social beings. We connect, right? And in those connections, we form bonds, we form brain activity, we, we move ahead. But in this day and age, we are inundated with virtual learning, Zoom meetings, um, what else, apps, gaming, that aren't social at all. I mean, to call it social media is kind of a joke because you're interacting with a tablet or a phone or a computer. You're not acting socially. Right? And in the last few years, we've seen an increase in drug and alcohol abuse with teens. We've seen teen suicide and higher depression rates, all of these tied to self-esteem. In this, in this slide right now, Jack Kenzui, and I apologize, Jack, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but he is part of the Yale University Institute in Bioethics. He says, self-esteem, therefore, is one of the most essential components of life. It can have a profound impact on you and the lives of those around you. And you notice he said self-esteem. He didn't say positive or negative because either has a tremendous impact. By way of example, my closest friend is totally blind, has been his whole life. He played clarinet in his high school's marching band. He had a wingman, he talks about. Sticks his arm out, wingman has his arm out. As long as he was in contact, he knew where to march. He credits his band experience with giving him those opportunities to develop social skills. He was able to go to football games and march in the, the halftime shows and do pep rallies and concerts and other events and allowed him to develop the social skills that he would later need to be successful in sales and build a tremendously successful company. So we tie it all out. The improved academic uh, scores, brain development, self-esteem, all tie together. They're all well documented. Less documented is my personal experience in playing. And I can tell you that playing music with other people is one of the most life-affirming activities you can participate in. There's a connection to the music. There's a connection to the musicians. There's a connection to the audience. It's an event that's greater than yourself and greater than the sum of the parts. In conclusion, I am all about opportunity. But we all know that the most socially, or the, sorry, the most economically disadvantaged people in our society are those with the least opportunities. Therefore, at instrumentsofchange.com, when our students finish the band program, they earn an instrument for middle school band. We want to eliminate the economic barrier that keeps them from this life-changing opportunity. It's absolutely incredible. That's why we say we're changing lives one note at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Glenn Schubert, and I am an instrument of change.